Hey guys, it's Andre here. Today I want to show you how to test for boost leaks on the 1.4 liter turbo found on the Chevy Cruze and Chevy Sonic. The reason why I'm doing this video is because these cars all have boost leaks. I have not come across one that doesn't have one. And when a boost leak occurs, you're basically dumping uh, boost on wide open throttle. And you probably have a vacuum leak under idle conditions or when you're uh, pulling lighter loads. So being able to diagnose a boost leak will help your car run more efficiently, help it make more power, and in some cases uh, will help it actually operate. Some, car, some of these cars just fall flat on their faces, start breaking up at you know, higher RPMs, stuttering, misfiring, whatever you want to call it, because the boost leaks are so major. And so a boost leak tester is an important part of your toolkit for this particular engine. Uh, unfortunately, these engines are not made to be very expensive. They're not made to be very, very reliable. And so you're going to have to uh, perform some procedures on your car to make sure that it works optimally you know over its lifespan and this is definitely on the top of that list now I made a boost leak tester and I sold about 15 of those in about two hours it didn't take very long at all I'm probably gonna start making a few more uh, there's more than one way to do this uh, I'm not saying my way is the only way I'm not saying my way is the best way although I really do like this method and I feel I find that it works very very well so the first thing I do is I get a cap, and that cap you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever, home improvement store, that's a PVC pipe cap that's two inches, and that will hold the pressure that we need just fine. The second thing I do is I make a boost leak tester, as you see here, and this is a quarter inch hose, quarter inch fuel hose you can get from any auto store, and that quarter inch hose, let me get a pointer here, goes into a uh, barb to quarter inch national pipe thread fitting, that goes into a T, which is also a quarter inch national pipe thread, into a gauge that I'll talk about later, into a nipple, into a valve, into a compressor uh, air fitting, air plug, basically. Now, the, the, the gauge is kind of important here because you want to be able to track pressure. Don't go out and buy one from Harbor Freight. You're going to want to spend good money on one of these. I expect to spend about 10 to 15 bucks if you're getting it yourself. Uh, I'm able to get it about 50% off at $8 a piece. So retail mine would be about $15, $16 if you were to buy it at full price. Now this gauge is pretty accurate. I really like it. Go for something between 0 and 30 PSI or 0 and 60 PSI, but don't go any higher than that. You want it to be accurate at about 20 PSI, which is where we're going to be testing. All right. So what I've got here is I've got the pipe cap on the turbo. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this boost leak tester over on the intake manifold which I'll show you right here where the connector for the brake booster goes now I've got a second connector underneath it which it tees into and that's for my PCV check valve kit version 2 you can find that in another video that I made recently that fixes the uh, intake manifold check valve problem that these cars also have so you want to squeeze the two tabs on the side you can see that over there and just pull that thing off uh, I like to put a little silicone spray on the hose here inside so it just slides over nicely. I've already done that to make this video quicker. You want to just slide that over until it goes all the way at the bottom. And it'll slide in pretty easily and it'll stay there. It won't leak. So once you got the pipe cap on, make sure that thing's tight. I've had it pop off on me before. It was <laughs> kind of frightening at first. And grab your compressor hose. Uh, you do need a compressor to do this. And the compressor has to be regulated at 20 to 25 PSI. Do not go over that pressure or that little dipstick is going to fly out and pop you in the eye and you're going to go blind. So anyways, here's my compressor. I've got it regulated at about 22 PSI right now and we're going to hook it up and see what happens. First, close it. Make sure it's closed. And then pop the connector on. So my connector is on, valve is closed, we don't have any pressure. So we're gonna open the valve to release the pressure inside the system. Now what this is gonna do is this is going to simulate turbo boost conditions if your car was tuned, which will make about 20 to 21 PSI with the BNR tune. And what that'll do is it'll basically put air pressure in the charge pipe starting right here from the turbo. You see that clamp in the middle of the screen? That clamp is a charge pipe connector to the turbo. That is a potential leak point. And that connects and goes all the way to the side. I really apologize for the lighting. I'm in my garage and I don't have the greatest lighting, but I'll try to make do here. You see that pipe on the bottom? Not the one above it, but the one at the bottom going sideways. That is the charge pipe that goes into the intercooler. Now at the intercooler connection, it can also leak. And 
that seal inside gets a little dirty. So you'll want to pull that uh, connection off and I'll probably show you how to do that in another video and basically clean that out because that's another leak point. And you got the same situation on the other side charge pipe which comes all the way around here and comes up and goes into the throttle body. The throttle body is probably the first thing you're going to hear. That's the biggest leak point source on this entire engine because the seal is just terrible. It is absolutely hor it's just horrendous. On the other side of the throttle body, the throttle body connects to the intake manifold. That's the piece of plastic connecting over there. Now on the bottom, you notice a little green tab sticking out in the bottom center of my screen there. Kind of hard to show with, the, with this light. But that is your throttle body gasket and that can, that can also leak. This whole black thing with all the connections connected to it is your intake manifold. And where it connects to the cylinder head, that is also a potential leak point because the intake manifold gasket can also leak. So you've got quite a few points and the best way to find how much you're leaking and where you're leaking is with a boost leak tester like this. Now, I will warn you that you will have some leak that's going to be basically, you know, you're not going to be able to find where it is. And my best guess is that you're basically pressurizing the crankcase, which is not really normal and probably, you know, spitting out a bit of air through your valve cover seals. And also you're going to be moving air through your turbo seals as well. But it's not going to be enough to where you, you know, it would be a big deal. So I'm going to show you how to boost leak test it right now. Let's turn the valve on, put some pressure in the charge system. I can charge it nice and slow. And you'll notice that when it starts to pressurize, that cap starts to pop up. And that's why I told you to make sure it's tight so it doesn't pop off of there. And I'll give it all the pressure that I've got here. Now, again, I told you my tank is set up to about 22 PSI and it's gonna get there nice and slow. Right now, it's probably pressurizing the crankcase. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it up to about 20 PSI, wait for it to hold steady at 20 PSI, and then we're gonna turn the valve off to see what it's doing. Now, at this point, you could choose to leave it on if you already hear a hissing, so you can go ahead and find where that hissing is. Keeping constant uh, air pressure supplied will allow you to hear that hissing instead of having it go away and having to refill it all the time like some of the other boost leak testers do where you hook up you know um, a tire a Schrader valve uh, connector so this method allows you to be able to keep constant pressure uh, look for your boost leak listen for the hissing and see where your boost leak is now once you found your boost leak again your charge pipe is one of your biggest areas charge pipe to a uh, throttle body I mean once you find your boost leak and you want to make sure that the system is tight, you're going to want to close this valve and keep an eye on this pressure. All right, let me try to angle this so you can see it better. This is basically what an engine should look like if you don't have any significant boost leaks. You should be able to watch the needle go down and it should take at least 20 seconds to go from 20 psi to 10 psi. If it takes less than 20 seconds, uh, you got a problem. Now I'm not counting here, but this is going to take quite a long time to get to 10 psi. I'm going to guess it's about 30 seconds on my particular car. So just looking at the video, I think we're about 15 seconds right now and we're four PSI down. So the, the lower you go in pressure, the lower it leaks, the less, uh, the slower it's gonna leak, you know, the, the less the pressure is. We are now at uh, officially 30 seconds since I closed the valve. So it's taken 30 seconds to lose five PSI. That is totally acceptable. And that is a good running engine that does not have any significant boost leaks on the outside. Um, again, I highly recommend you guys do this. Uh, this is a tool that should be in every uh, 1.4 liter owner's toolbox. Whether you've got a Sonic or a Cruise, it doesn't matter. You need to check for boost leaks because boost leaks will cause the engine to run improperly. Um, you may be starting to break up. You may have misfires. You may notice your fuel economy you know, uh, dropping. You may even have a check engine light. Um, just because you don't have a check engine light doesn't mean your engine is operating optimally. It doesn't mean that you do not have a boost leak that's robbing you both power and efficiency. So I highly recommend that you do go out of your way, put together a boost leak tester or buy one from me. I'll put together a link at the bottom of this video in the description showing you where to pick those up since it looks like I need to start keeping them in stock because they sold out really fast. So in any case, I uh, hope you guys got something out of this video. Thanks for watching. It looks like we are at about a minute and 30 seconds and we still have not gotten to 10 PSI. That needle is barely moving. So that is what you want to see on your own engine. Again, make sure the engine's hot when you're doing this. Make sure that your compressor is set to no more than 20, 25 PSI. And uh, happy wrenching, guys.